the square root of 56. It's not obvious to me what that is, but I do know that 56 is 8 times 7. So I'll write that. That's the square root of 8 times 7. And 8 is 4 times 2. So I'll write this is the square root of 4 times 2 times 7. And 4 is a perfect square. So instead of having the square root of 4, I can just write 2, because 2 is the square root of 4. So this is going to be a 2 outside the radical. This 2 is still in the radical, and so is the 7. So I'll recombine those. The 2 times the 7 is a 14. So I end up with 2 times the square root of 14. That's my answer. The square root of 84. 84 is 2 times 42. So I'll write the square root of 2 times 42. And 42 is 2 times 21. So I have the square root of 2 times 2 times 21. Now the 21 can be factored into 7 times 3, but that doesn't help me. There's no perfect squares. My only perfect squares are right here. This 2 times 2 is a 2 squared. So those will come out from under the radical. And instead of having 2 2's under the radical, a 2 squared, I'll just have a 2 outside the radical. So, so this is 2 times the square root of 21. Now down here, the 4x squared, square root of 4x squared. Well, the 4 is a perfect square, so it pops out from under the radical and just becomes a 2. And the x squared, it pops out also and just becomes an x. So there's no radical left when we're done here. The square root of 4x squared is simply 2x. On this one, the 5x squared the 5 has to stay. It's not a perfect square and doesn't have any perfect square factors. The x squared can pop out of here. The square root of x squared is simply x, so I'm left with the x out front and the square root of 5 under the radical. And you could write that as x times the square root of 5 or square root of 5 times x, either way. And I'll put boxes around those. A lot of times I like to have boxes around my answers just to make it clear on the page what the answer is.